Good evening and welcome to evening prayer with uh, with me, Jo Lacey, parish nurse and parish nurses, nursing service lead. And I work across the North Blackwater parishes of our Blackwater benefice. Uh, it's lovely to be back with you again this evening. And uh, here we are, Sunday, the 7th of May. I hope you're all having a lovely bank holiday weekend and uh, and are enjoying the celebrations for the coronation of King Charles the third and uh, I think what's so important uh, during our celebration and enjoyment of uh, the coronation of King Charles III is to remember who our true king is Lord Jesus Christ and I'm just going to read for you in relation to our, our undoubted King Jesus. Two verses from a beautiful hymn, which I hope will resonate with you as well. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. Hark, how the heavenly anthem drowns, or music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him, who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the son of God before the worlds began, and ye who tread where he hath trod, crown him the son of man, who every grief have known that wrings the human breast and takes and bears them for his own, that all in him may rest. And the final verse, I can't resist this. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. So we certainly respect our earthly monarch. And I also feel it's important that we make homage in our heart and voice to our undoubted King Jesus. Amen to that. So let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Compassionate God, as you know each star you have created, so you know the secrets of every heart. In your loving mercy, bring to your table all who are fearful and broken, all who are wounded and needy, that our hungers may be satisfied in the city of your peace, through Christ, who is our peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, for ever. Amen. 
Our first reading this evening is taken from Zechariah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 10. And for me, um, this book, the book of Zechariah, brings alive God's promises. And we learn that the Messiah will come and a new age will dawn. The angel who talked with me came again and wakened me. As one is wakened from sleep, he said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a, lamp a lampstand of all of gold with a bowl on top of it. There are seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on top of it. And by it, there are two olive trees, one on the right, the bowl, and the other on the left. I said to the angel who talked to me, what are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me answered me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my Lord. He said to me, These are the word of the Lord. So Rubabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a great plain, and he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have lain the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it, and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. For the word of the Lord, we give thanks to God. Our New Testament reading this evening is taken from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Beautiful reading. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the last seven plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the city, the holy city of Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It is the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel like jasper, clear as crystal. 
it is it has a great high wall with 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city has 12 foundations and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 12 apostles of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my soul and has become my salvation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my soul. He has become my salvation. I'm now going to offer you a little piece relating to the question of loneliness. But before I do so, in prayer, let us be quiet for a moment as we pray and give thanks to God. We pray for those who are lonely, for those who are isolated, for those grieving, for those who are unwell in mind, body or spirit. We have a moment's silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. The question of loneliness. Scripture tells us that Jesus experienced loneliness. On the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark chapter 15 and in Isaiah chapter 53 a prophecy about Jesus we read he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain when loneliness is discussed in the media it most typically is in the context of older people which is really important but I'm always a little shocked that it's only older people because as lockdown has shown me through my experience in the NHS and in parish nursing ministry, older people certainly have needed support, which in many ways has strongly related to loneliness. But my experience has also demonstrated that loneliness be difficult and extremely painful at any age, including for those at university in many cases, including for people surrounded by people but no one really to engage with. I'm going to read quickly for you um, what I feel is a beautiful passage, a really thought-provoking passage from Olivia Lang's book, The Lonely City. Loneliness is hallmarked by an intense desire to bring experience to a close, something which cannot be achieved by sheer willpower or by simply getting out more, but only by developing intimate connections. This is far easier said than done, especially for people whose loneliness arises from a state of loss or exile or prejudice, who have reason to fear or mistrust, as well as long for the society of others. The lonelier a person gets, the less adept they become at navigating social currents. Loneliness grows around them like mold or fur, a prophylactic that inhibits contact, no matter how badly contact is desired. Loneliness is accretive, extending and perpetuating itself. Once it becomes impacted, 
it is by no means easy to this to dis dislodge. It is very difficult to dislodge. Forging meaningful connections is, is so important for all of us. And I've had so much experience of how difficult this can be for people. And people have asked me in parish nursing ministry, where can I find a real friend, someone who cares for me? It might seem an unlikely question. Here in the UK, we're home to over 67 million people. And in England, 50 to 56 and a half million. How can anyone be lonely? But they are, and there is hope. Against that awful reality stands the words of Jesus. I am with you always, from Matthew 28, verse 20. And you mustn't forget that he said these words on the side of an empty tomb after he had already come back from the dead. And those words have meaning. And they have meaning particularly as Jesus is alive. If Easter did not happen, then Jesus is not with us and we are truly alone. We all know Easter did happen. And the Lord Jesus said to us, I will never leave you in Hebrews 13. If we belong to him, he will never leave us because he rose from the dead and he lives today with us forever. Therefore, we are never alone, never forsaken. Christ laid down his life for us. So I'm going to share with you some practical strategies. to help reduce loneliness and to help others who may be lonely and isolated. The first one is to connect with God and reach out and connect with people who don't know God, as well as those who do. And I think we have so many wonderful examples of this within our benefits. And with young people, we have wonderful examples in Fellowship Afloat. Number two is connecting with fellow believers by attending a worship service or joining an event within the community and to do it regularly. And Bible study is a very good example of this. And enjoying times in fellowship. And thirdly, reaching out to connect with people those of faith and those of no faith. Particularly those who don't know that the Lord is integral to our lives. And again, so many wonderful examples with all the community work and the support being offered within our seven parishes. Often the natural inclination when one's feeling lonely might be to pull back and see if anyone will reach out to us. I would encourage you to turn that around. And this gives us wisdom about who to connect with. God is faithful. He will open doors for us all to become more connected. So in summary then, Try speaking to someone new, be brave, and think outside your comfort zone. It can be really difficult from my experience, but it's really quite empowering and helpful to do this. And ask someone just practically how their weekend was and really listen when they tell you. Put a few minutes aside to find out how a friend or a colleague is doing. Those we love and those we struggle to love, as Reverend Sarah reminds us. Visit a friend, someone who you feel may need, may value support or company. 
working and volunteering, even in a small way, can be a wonderful way of engaging and can help our mental health broadly as well as the person we're supporting. So our final prayer in this short piece, short talk, let us pray. Father, help us to trust in your guidance and show us how to please you. Help enable us to reduce loneliness and loneliness and isolation within our communities and help us to encourage others to learn more about you along the way. Amen. Amen. So our collect for the day. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, Grant that, by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I wish you all a wonderful evening and night ahead on Bank Holiday Monday. In relation to my little piece about loneliness and isolation, if there's anything you feel you'd like to talk about, please do be able to email me and I will contact you. Um, my work email address is nurse at blackwaterparishnursing.org.uk. That's nurse at blackwaterparishnursing.org.uk dot org dot uk or have a look on my website or on our parish nursing service website which is www.blackwaterparishnursing.org.uk god bless